Hello everyone. I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about query methods. Please subscribe our YouTube channel Structural Guide. You may receive notification on new videos. Let's discuss about query methods. I have listed here the query methods mostly used in the construction. Today we are going to discuss about these each of these methods. Water curing, wet covering, formwork curing, membrane curing, sheet curing, curing by absorbing heat, hot mixing methods, electrical curing, infrared curing, cover with sand, sawdust to soil, natural curing. So let's discuss about each of these methods in detail. Water curing. This is very common and most of you are aware about this water curing method. That's because we are regularly use this water curing method. Water is continuously applied over the concrete surface, letting not allowing the concrete surface to dry. In general, this kind of methods used in small scale construction, like uh, I mean slab constructions. Mostly we use this method. We do not let the concrete surface to dry. Now, in slab construction, there is no issue with the heat because it's a thinner concrete. So, there, there, there are no very high rise in the temperature. So, th therefore, we can use this method to cure the concrete. Uh, we can, there are mainly two methods. We can do the curing by ponding the concrete. You, you make a curb around the concrete and fill the slab area with the concrete. Other method, we use sprinklers to spray the con water continuously over the concrete surface. The next method is wet covering. Generally, we use gunny bags to cover the structural element after it's getting I mean for, for concrete columns once its formwork is removed for slabs once it get hardened we can put the gunny bags over the surface and we can apply the water this also we use for the fairly thin concrete elements not for the large concrete elements if it's applied for large elements there will be issue we'll discuss that in the latter part of this video in this method we don't want to apply water continuously but uh, we have to apply the water regularly. Now, when, when the gunny bag get dry, we have to apply the water. Next method is the formwork curing. This is now not a new thing. We have to do, we don't want to do many things here. Thing is, we keep the formwork until the con until the curing period is over. Generally, curing period is seven days. So, if we can keep the formwork seven days then we don't want to apply water to the concrete surface only the top surface we have to cover or any sort of curing method we don't to use only for the top surface especially for the columns if, if there are not smaller columns but for the larger column also we can keep the foam work then we have to put cure only the top surface of the column but due, due to the sparse construction, this may not be possible. But wherever possible, we can use this method. Uh, in addition to that, now we can use this method for the pile cups, for our foundations. So we have to keep the side foam work and do the curing for top surface. Membrane curing. The purpose of membrane curing is to avoid the evaporation of the water. One of the prime important tasks of the curing is to avoid the evaporation of concrete evaporation of the water from the concrete surface. If water evaporates from the concrete surface, there won't be adequate moisture for the hydration reaction. Then the, there will be cracks and also the strength of the cover zone will be reduced. Durable, it affect to the durability of the structure. Therefore, we have to maintain the moisture in the concrete surface. So, membrane curing, as a as we can do as a precaution to avoid this operation. 
this also we might not use for the very thick concrete because now if the surface we have applied a thin membrane now uh, with the heat and with the ambient temperature variations the surface concrete temperature could vary when in a thick concrete we have to maintain a temperature difference and the temperature gradient at a certain level therefore we have to be careful when we use uh, when we use this method for the thick concrete this uh, membrane can be applied by a brush or roller or we can spray over the concrete surface this type of uh, this type of uh, material may be water based or oil based Th those two types of the material could be there so let's with that let's move to the next method of curing sheet curing this also mostly we have seen it uh, now first thing is we can have a polythene sheet over the concrete surface to control the evaporation as i mentioned in the previously in the membrane curing the similar concept similar thing the things i had mentioned there will be applied to the sheet curing also there are limitations we discuss in the mem under mem membrane curing those things will be applied to the sheet curing polythene sheet plastic sheet curing blankets we can use to as a curing methods now out of this uh, out of this uh, plastic sheet and the curing blanket are fairly thick element that those things control the heat other than the polythene sheet because polythene sheet get heated very quickly but plastic sheet and curing blanket have some sort of a resistance to the heat curing by absorbing heat this is also called the pipe water curing. Now we have to discuss the technical things behind this. Now in a concrete, when 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 the concrete is fairly thick, the core temperature will rise. Now concrete like two meter, three meter thick, there will be very high heat. Now as a general norm, core temperature we maintain around seventy degrees. This depend on 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 based on the uh, project specification but generally say we have to maintain about 70 degrees so if this temperature right beyond the 70 degrees there could be possibilities of formation formatting delayed a twin guide what is this delayed if temperature rise beyond the 70 degrees the form a twin guide will form in the concrete with the time this form formation of this a twin guide in the core of the concrete will increase the volume with the increase of the volume in a concrete will get cut this has to be avoided therefore we have to control the rise of the temperature in the concrete so we place the pipes inside the concrete to absorb the heat as you can see in this figure we supply the water into the concrete and we monitor the temperature also so whether there is a change we we can maintain the core temperature in a certain level then there won't be rising the temperature if we can monitor the temperature then we know what's the core temperature so this also we do for fairly thick concrete so this is all about absorbing heat now when we discuss about the curing we have to there are several methods for curing of concrete first one is the maintain the surface moisture level second thing that we discussed previously absorbing the heat of the concrete third one is increasing the temperature of the concrete now it's also kind of cure now when we do a uh, concreting in a cold weather for example in some com some country the temperature is low as 15 degrees in such a situation, we can't wait till the concrete rise to up to 30 degrees. But we have to do the concrete. So in such a situations, we have to increase the temperature of concrete. For example, now rise of the concrete temperature up to 32 degrees. Enhance the strength of the concrete by 10 to 20 percent. So fairly large amount. So we have to rise the temperature in 
such situations. So, hot mixing is one of the method we use to increase the temperature of the curry. We can increase the aggregate temperature by heating. We can heat the water. We can inj inject steam into the concrete mix. But by these methods, we can we can increase the temperature of the concrete. So there are some methods relevant to this. Those things also we can add to heat up the concrete. Next method, electrical curing. This method also we use to increase the temperature of the concrete. When we do the cold concrete in the cold weather, weather, we use this method also to increase the temperature of the concrete. This is basically an electrical current passing through the concrete. There are several uh, method we do to temp rise the temperature of the concrete. Electrical current pass to the fresh concrete, fresh lead concrete. That's the one thing. Second thing, high current having a low voltage part into the reinforcement net. This also can be done. Large electrical banquet are utilized for the purpose of heating the subsurface. These methods we can use to rise the temperature of the concrete. So this is also kind of a curing method. Not only the reducing temperature, but also we have to increase the temperature of the concrete sometimes. The next method is the infrared cube. It's also a similar method we, we use to rise the temperature of the concrete. By this method, we may use we may heat the concrete formwork, so not the concrete, we may heat the formwork or circulating heated water inside the concrete using infrared another next method today we are going to discuss is the covering the concrete surface by sawdust sand or soil this also kind of a common method we use now for 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 large concrete pores or pile caps uh, rough foundations we can apply this method what we do is once the concrete is pores and it slightly get hardened we lay a polythene layer over the concrete surface. On the top of that, we place sawdust layer, fairly thick sawdust layer. With that, we can maintain the surface concrete at a certain level. And also we can maintain the temperature. By that, we can maintain the temperature gradients and temperature difference at a constant level. That's the prime purpose of this. So, this also, therefore, this method also we can use in most of the cases sand soil also we can use uh, as a replacement to the sawdust therefore we should keep in mind when there are other methods uh, not applicable or we are when it is very difficult to use other method we can use this sawdust sand or soil as a curing method curing okay, materials the final curing method that we are going to discuss is the natural curing. This is basically we keep the concrete as it is, do nothing. But this method is not recommended method because now there, there are possibilities of evaporation of water. If water evaporated as we discussed previously, there will be issue. So if there is no heat and no rise of the temperature, significantly we could do we could use this natural curing that is keeping the concrete as it is but it's basically it's not recommended method but we have seen in, in construction some people even without knowing the put the concrete keep the concrete as it is without doing any kind of curing method that's not acceptable so Today, that's end of the today's discussion. Today we are discuss about the curing methods. So I hope that it would be useful to enhance to your knowledge. Uh, again, I am request you to subscribe our YouTube channel to get more videos and updates. Thank you very much.